I'm Tanya June Moore. This is the Sedona International Film Festival 25th Anniversary Edition. Special thanks to Digitech, uh, Black Magic Design, and the Sedona Rouge for being our sponsors of the Media Room this year. And I have a very interesting person <laughs> in my seat. He has major <laughs> connections to this community yeah. and this festival. Yeah. Please introduce yourself and your movie. Uh, hi, my name is Pat Battistini, and I'm with the movie Tin Can. I'm the writer, director, and editor. Uh, and before we go into your movie, I do want to go talk about, like, how many people in this community you know? Well, what happened? Uh, well, short, I, short, short. I, I kind of knew two, and then last night I, I learned I knew three. Um, I'm friends with uh, Brian and Lori Reinhardt, who are very close and um, very dear to this festival. And um, I had reconnected with them several years back because Brian's brother moved just very close to me in Los Angeles, so we all connected again. And then we were all. But you grew up together, you, like we elementary grew up, yeah, school. In, yeah, yeah, in, in Indiana together. We used to do musicals. Together. That's uh, Brian's father is a legend in Northwest Indiana for uh, directing musicals. So when I was 12, I did my first one, and that's where I met Brian and Laurie. And uh, we did Fiddler on the Roof. Well, I always remember we were talking about that. Um, and then, uh, so flash forward 39 some odd years, or more, even more than that, um, we were at the part one of the parties last night, and one of the waiters came up to me and he said, Hey, Pat. And again, you meet people briefly at festivals. And I was like, Hi, how are you? And I'm thinking in my mind, I really don't know this man. And he just said right after, he goes, It's John Poggi. And I was like, Oh my gosh. And he was a childhood friend of, of Brian and Lori's. And they, what, I think he went to grade school with Brian. Um, and I had known him because went I went to high school with him. And I, but I hadn't seen him in 39 years. And here he is showing up. And Brian and, and Lori didn't know he was in Sedona either. So all three of us, all four of us are just sitting around like, wow. It was a, just a wow moment because he wasn't on Facebook. So that really yeah. was even more, you know, it was, it was the icing on the, on the cake. But it was just wonderful to reconnect for not only Brian and Lori again, but with, uh, with John. So just, yeah, small, small world. Small world, absolutely. Very small. Okay, yeah. all right. The so world revolves around. Sedona. It really yes. does. Yeah. If everybody realized that. Yeah. Right? <laughs> this vortex that we're in. It is. It is. <laughs> um, okay. So let's talk about your movie. Sure. Uh, and let's look at the trailer and then we'll get into the movie. Okay. I haven't seen the movie myself. So okay. Give me some sure. Time. What's anchoring you? I want to come back. My knee is good. One of them. Too bad I ain't the banged up one. Come on. I mean, you know, when I get out in that arena with the crowd cheering me on and my adrenaline pumping, like, I'll be fine. Yeah, I bet you would. So that I'm in. Problem is, no more crowd. What are you talking about? JC, you've been gone that long? We're closing down. What? Animal rights groups, insurance, drought, you name it, though. No. The old lady and I, we're, we're just done. It's time. You, you couldn't find another buyer to keep it going? Tried. Nothing doing. So that Mrs. and I were just going to liquidate and sell the facility. It, it, it was a tough decision, but the right one. But you got to have something on your plate. JC, I'm so sorry. All right. <laughs> so what's the basis of the story? Um, the, the basis of the story is uh, he's a rodeo clown, and he gets injured. Um, and uh, it's his life. It's all he's known. It's all he's ever done. And uh, he's unable to really, because of, of the way things are working these days with the rodeos, he's unable to f find any more work. So really, it's the movie about him trying to discover uh, another way in life that he can kind of, I call it finding his smile, finding what he loves to do. He's a performer. He's an artist. And so uh, the movie takes us in, in that journey, um, and then he uh, has an incident uh, near the Mexican-American border that kind of... Uh, not only uh, sheds uh, a new type of uh, outlook on life for himself, but several people around him as well. Ah, yeah. So has it screened yet here at the festival? Uh, yeah, we screened yesterday and we'll screen again tomorrow morning. How was your screening yesterday? Wonderful, wonderful. Yeah, the audiences here are great. You know, they just really appreciate independent films. Um, and uh, they were so warm and giving with their questions and very interested in, in the process. So it was just great. It was a great experience. What was it like getting the phone call that you made it in? Um, you know, Patrick's a great guy. I mean, his energy alone is just uh, amazing. Um, and uh, I, from a filmmaker's point of view, there you know there are 
hundreds of festivals out there. And you really don't want to say, oh, I want to really in this one, I really get. But there are certain festivals you really want to get into. Uh, so when I found out that I was coming to Sedona, it was pretty, pretty special. Yeah. And you've got ties to this community and showing yeah. up here and yeah. having such a, a welcoming reception. Yeah. Um, what was the, I mean, how did you come upon this film? What what was it that resonated with you that you felt like you had to tell this story? Well, um, I, I've known most of the actors are, are a lot of friends of mine I've known for years in L.A., but Carlos is actually a professional. He's a Ringling Brothers clown. And uh, I met him 30 years ago. He and I worked at a Club Med in Florida. Mm -hmm. And we kind of lost touch. And I knew he was a, a, a great performer. And um, we lost touch. And then about 10 years, in, in actually 20 years ago in L.A., I ran into him again. And uh, so we're friends on Facebook, and then I, as a needy actor that he is, and I'm okay, I'm okay to say that in front of him too, because he knows he is, um, that uh, he was looking for projects. He just wanted something to do, because really his survival jobs is, uh, he does a lot of stunt work and things like that, but he doesn't really get a lot of meaty roles. So I knew he was a clown, um, so I kind of just took it from there, and this thing's evolved. When people watch the film, they'll see that it's quite topical with today's, not political climate, things going on in the world. Um, and uh, so it evolved as art, almost an, uh, an artist uh, type of work, something that I wanted to, to produce and make. And then it got its own legs kind of with everything going on in the world. And, and now it's really just snowballed into a message of kindness, pretty much is what it comes down to. I was yeah. ready to ask what the message was, but yeah. kindness yeah. and compassion. And compassion and all for of others. those wonderful things. Totally, 100%. Yeah. I think you're in the right place for those things. Well, that's great. So far, it seems like it because everybody's been very kind and compassionate toward me. So, yeah. Were there any good questions that the audience threw out after seeing it last night that ring up true? Or? Um, the, the, the one consistent question I get is um, how do other audiences react to the message of your film? Because you can really take it one way or another. And uh, I didn't when I made this film, I have my own political beliefs, but it's kind of like right down the middle to let, it's really just to spark conversation. Um, and that's what you want people to do with everything going on. There's so many ugly things and people cannot have a civil discussion these days. So this film can spark a civil conversation about how can we resolve our problems together. So. How to fight without biting. Exactly. Right? Yeah. yeah. No drawing blood, we can do this. Yeah. <laughs> right? So true, so true. Uh, well, we're glad to have you here. And I'm very happy to, to be, be here. in this festival with the caliber of films that I have seen so far. Congratulations. I'm in awe. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'm in awe. The, the talent here is absolutely amazing. I'm humbled to be here. I really am. Well, I can't wait to hear about your next screener and what happens from this point forward. Where Thank can you. people catch up with you online? Uh, I'm, uh, my film or my website is HoosierDaddyFilms.com. I'm from Indiana, so it's Hoosier as in Hoosiers. So Hoosier Daddy <laughs> Films. There's a Hoosier uh, Daddy Liquors in, in. Well, you know, there's now there's all there's Hoosier Daddy Barbecue Sauce. Uh, Hoosier, <laughs> I saw Hoosier Daddy Pies the other day or something, you know. So, so there's all kinds of Hoosier Daddy now. But I'm the only HoosierDaddyFilms.com. And then on Facebook, it's a Tin Can uh, Movie on Facebook. Book, they can find me there too. So, okay. Yeah. Make sure you go and check it out, ladies and gentlemen. Tin Can here at the Sedona International Film Festival. Uh, we will be back tomorrow with more interviews. Stay tuned and uh, we'll catch you on the next round.